Hey guys, welcome back to Kiwi Classics and Customs. We're starting on kind of stage two of this, or part two, uh, of this yellow fastback, nicknamed Bumblebee. It's Bumblebee because it's yellow outside and black inside. So that's that story. Anyway, uh, we've got the engine all in place now. I think we did on the last video. Now, since then, we've got the 68 uh, Mustang radiator in place. We've modified the core support, uh, which you would have seen us doing on a green Mustang. Um, so that's all in place, fans in there. We've got a nice chrome, you know, single wire alternator on it now. You know, just simplify, simplifying things and modernizing them a little bit. Uh, over here, we've got the brake master cylinder and booster out because we've added this hydraulic clutch setup here, which is for the, the TKX. Because uh, we've started doing the install on that. We've got the bell housing in, I've got it measured. We've got our offset dowels. So that's all taken care of now. We have run into a little problem with the TKX though. This is a big transmission. It's a super strong transmission, but it's quite big. It's fat here. Like the old four speeds are kind of only really that long and then they go to a very thin tail housing. But they're quite fat here, quite high on these edges. And we're having clearance problems. The American Powertrain supply a cross member that actually drops the transmission down to give you clearance here. And what we found with that Mustang we had in here a week or so ago is that dropping that down is putting a, an angle in the drivetrain and it's causing a vibration. So I believe we've got a fix for it, but we're gonna put this up in the air and show you what we're gonna do. Right, so here we are under the car. You see the bell housing's all in place. You'll see my little measurements here that was, that was centering up the bell housing over the crankshaft that's all done now back to the transmission this cross member here is the factory cross member that this little puppy goes on to that's the factory style cross member this is the one that comes with the kit it drops the transmission quite a bit it bolts up here drops the transmission well down might be that way um, drops the transmission well down and it's causing a misalignment with the shaft, the drive shaft. So what we're gonna do, and we have done it before on an automatic car, actually the purple fastback, which you guys have probably seen, is we cut this whole cross member out here and basically slide it back uh, so that it, it lines up with the original. Uh, so what we'll end up doing is using the original cross member with a stock rubber mount uh, and that will bolt onto here because if you put this up here now, the standard cross member's sitting probably three inches further back uh, because of the sheer length of the transmission. Uh, so we're gonna take this out, move it back, and that will place, this is about two and a half inches wide, and that will, instead of being directly over here on this large section, it'll fit over here. And that will give us quite a bit more real estate to work with. So that will, that will allow us to lift the transmission up probably an inch from where it can be at the moment, close to an inch. And yeah, so it's a little bit of work uh, cutting all this out. We've obviously, we've got the floor up, you know, the carpet's up, the seats are out. Uh, you know, we've got a bit of cutting and drilling to do, re-weld it back in. It is a bit of work. Admittedly, it's probably a day's work to get it out and get it back in, but it's gonna give us a better result at the end of the day. It's gonna get rid of those vibrations that we're fighting on the other car. We may end up doing this on the other car if this is successful. Pretty sure it will be, but you know, you never know till you've actually got it done. So yeah, that's that's the story. We've already started drilling a few of the spot welds out. We've got a few uh, little MIG welds from the factory to cut off, and we'll get that out. We'll slip the transmission back on the bell housing, and we'll get this lined up so that it matches the transmission where the transmission wants to be. We'll push it up in there, burn it back in carry on. All right, back in a second. Okay, we've got this cross member cut out. As you can see, that's where it used to be. And we're gonna move this back probably around that three inch mark, um, just depending where it falls into place with the transmission mount. So uh, yeah, we'll get the transmission up in here now, sit this back up, get it at its final resting place. So here we have it. Yeah, uh, it's. We've got it all up in place, mocked up. Cross members held up with a couple of jack stands. And everything's sitting nice. We've got clearance around the top of the transmission because this is now further back and over the narrower part of the tail shaft. 
So we've got clearance up there. It's not hard on, you know, transmission to metal. Uh, we've still got a little bit of uh, shaping to do here. You can see a couple of gaps at the corners here. It's got to go up a little further yet, but we got room. We can do that. Uh, so that's a little bit of massaging, a little bit of trimming, get it fine-tuned. Uh, the great thing with doing it this way is it's a stock cross member. We've got a stock transmission mount here, that, you know, the, the bracket. We've got a stock rubber transmission mount, which is better at soaking up any of the vibrations, anything like that. Like all these urethane mounts are, are great, but they can be a bit harsh. And this guy wants a comfortable cruiser, so rubber mounts are the best way to go. Uh, we can use the factory e-brake uh, set up here because that, that's on this little sub cross member. Uh, yeah, this is going to work out well. We've got some uh, issues here with the lines. You can see the little bend here, you know, needs to be here to, to bend around the cross member. So we've got to straighten that out, put a little bend here. Uh, you know, everything you do creates, you know, has a trickle down effect. So you move something here, you've got to move something else over there. But that's just, the, you know, getting it right and paying attention to detail. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the progress. Uh, we're going to get, uh, drop this out again. We'll clean up the metal work on the floor so we've got nice clean metal to weld to and get it burned in and we'll come back when it's all kind of looking like nothing's ever been changed it's all factory but it's not all right back in a second okay we've been busy barry's been busy uh we got all the cross member welded in now all massaged up into place without the big gaps we were looking at before so we've got it jacked up into place all burned in Bit of undercoat, bit of seam sealer to protect it all. It's going to be nice. So that done, we've also got all the clutch in. We've got the um, pilot bearing in, pressure plate, clutch plate. Uh, bell housing obviously bolted into it, you know, for the last time into place. And now we're kind of ready to actually stab the transmission in for the last time. So before we do that, I just wanted to show you a couple of things. Uh, this is the uh, hydraulic release bearing from American Powertrain. Nice little set setup. Um, you do have to shim it to get the clearance from that face on the release bearing, uh, you know, in relation to the clutch forks right up here. Um, so, and that's really just a case of measuring it. You use a caliper, straight edge across here. You measure down to the clutch fork. All right, you take your measurement, that's measurement A. Then you come around to your release bearing and you measure that. All right, and that's your measurement B. Subtract B from A. And now this is really laid out well, very well in the instruction book that you get with the kit from American Powertrain. Um, very well written, it's, it's, you know, you can understand it, it's easy. Uh, and they'll, they've even got the little places to put measurement A, measurement B, and you, you subtract them, and what you're looking for is between 100 and 200 thou. So it's not a big window. We've got six shims in here, that sat is right at 166 thou. So that's pretty close to the middle, so I'm happy with that. So there's that. Um, now, the shifter. When, when they make these bell housings and transmissions, that the transmission's rotated about three degrees, five degrees, like that way, and it moves this over. It moves this over to, you know, away from the driver. But what American Powertrain did is they come up with this nifty little piece, which is adjustable. You can undo that, rotate the direction of that. This goes on in multiple locations. And so for this application, we've moved it back that way and forward a little bit because everything's a little bit further back than it was you know, with a four speed. So that goes on there. You just tighten that up, that's ready to go in. So yeah, we're about to stab it in and get it up, get it back up with its nice rubber mount and the factory cross member, which I think is the best way to go. This has come up really nice. This really doesn't look like it's been modified or hacked up or it's, you know, the transmission mount looks like someone's made it out of strap steel. It, it it's, looks looks like it should have done from the factory, so I'm happy with that. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Um, obviously, we're going to come back with more of a wrap up. We've got disc brakes going on. There's all sorts of stuff going on. It's going to be an exciting car. Uh, so yeah, in the meantime, you guys have a great weekend, and we'll come back uh, for the next video. See ya.